Hello, listeners. This is Ken. Welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the reading of a one-shot entitled Love You Holy, Only Ever You. Here's the summary. The one where Shoto would never date anyone but Izuku, but ends up doing it anyway accidentally. Thank God for Ochako to guide him through, well, pretty much everything involving other human beings. Shoto knows almost everyone considers him to be oblivious to social norms and niceties, but he doesn't think that's quite true. He ignores a lot of social niceties because they feel like lies. For example, why should he be obligated to bid someone a good morning if he doesn't think that the morning is good, or he doesn't care if that particular person's is good or not? He prefers to be honest and say hello because there's no lie in that. It's a greeting and nothing more. He always says good morning to Izuku, of course. It's easy with him. They've been best friends since their first year at UA, and now in their third year. Shoto considers every morning a good morning once he sees Izuku, as well as always wanting it to be good for Izuku, too. Shoto loves him. Of course he wants Izuku's morning to be pleasant. There's no lie there, so it rolls off his tongue easily. Who doesn't want the love of their life to have a good morning? He's not a barbarian, after all. The norms are a slightly different matter. Izuku and the rest of his closest friends, Ochako, Tenya, and Sue, do their best to illuminate Shoto on customs he doesn't understand as they have since the formation of their friend group following the sports festival in their first year, or what Shoto likes to refer to as his wake-up call from Izuku. Still, he thinks he has most of the common ones down by now. If someone asks how he is, he asks them in return, even if he doesn't really care. If someone compliments him, he thanks them instead of correcting them. No, his eyes are not pretty, but he thanks them for saying so all the same. If someone mentions how attractive Izuku is, he doesn't freeze them into a block of human ice, because... That's not a rational response, at least according to Ochako. He thinks it's perfectly reasonable, but so far she's been an excellent guide on how to handle being in love with his best friend without giving his feelings away, so he does as he's told. If he happens to freeze a smaller section of them over discreetly, like their hand or foot, before ducking out of view so he can't be blamed, that's his business. Graduation day draws closer, which means soon he can tell Izuku. Once Izuku knows, he can go back to freezing people into blocks of human ice for asking him out or hitting on him, since there will be no reason to hide his irrational responses. Even just the phrasing, hitting on, makes him think all over freezing is an inappropriate response. It sounds violent and unpleasant, even if it is apparently a colloquial way of saying flirting overtly. He would never have guessed that one without an explanation from Ochako. What awful phrasing. It had also been her idea to wait until graduation to tell Izuku how he feels. She's 99.8% certain that Izuku returned Shoto's feelings. He'd wanted exact numbers, which took a full week to calculate, but he thinks it was worth it. Ochako disagrees, but she's also certain that Izuku would decline his advances, at least temporarily, if he confessed before their studies ended, since Izuku is extremely dedicated to his education. There's really nothing for him to worry about. He's clearly going to graduate at the top of their class, much to Bakugo's annoyance, but Izuku's never been one to coast on assumptions. Or rest on his laurels, which is apparently also a well-known phrase. Shoto admires that about him. While his own drive to become a hero is great, Izuku lives his determination, breathes his exertion of effort, and nourishes himself on ecstatic drive. He understands Ochako's point about him probably not wanting the distraction of romance until he's deemed ready for the professional world of heroics, but that's okay. He writes down the things that he wishes he could do, dates he thinks of, times he wishes he could kiss him, moments he wants to hold Izuku's hand. And he'll do them all, as soon as they're no longer students. Missing time doesn't have to mean they miss out on what they'd do in that time, after all. I don't understand why you do it, Shoto, Ochako says when he returns from a friendly hangout with Yayorozu. They went to an upscale tea shop, and it was very pleasant, so Shoto frowns at Ochako in confusion. Drink tea? He confirms. I understand you're more of a coffee person, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't drink tea, does it? Shoto, she sighs. He holds up a hand. I'm actually asking. If my friend prefers coffee, should I make more of an effort to drink coffee in solidarity? Izuka drinks coffee for you, too, so that you don't feel guilty for it being stocked just for you, since the rest of the class are tea drinkers. Her eyes widen comically. He does? Wait, no, no, not the important part right now, she says, shaking her head as if jostling her thoughts back into place. My question was, why do you go out with people knowing you're going to end up with Deku? You told me that it's polite to accept an invitation, he reminds her. As long as I'm not busy, sick, or feeling extremely emotionally volatile, you said I should try to spend more time with people other than Izuku, that it was healthy. I didn't tell you to date other people, though, she hisses at him. I know. 
I told you that you were isolating yourself whenever our group wasn't available, and it would do you good to spend some time with tertiary friends. I know, Ochako. So why, Shoto, did you suddenly start dating? Izuku's noticed, you know. How has he noticed something which isn't happening? Shoto asked, concerned. Has he been hit by a hallucination quirk? Ochako flounders, mouth flapping open and closed before rubbing her index fingers against her temples and breathing through her nose. She seems to do it a lot around Shoto, especially when she's trying to explain something to him, though he isn't sure why. Shoto, a month ago you started dating people, she states. And Izuku has been, for a month now, closing himself off from most of our class as a defense mechanism. I would just like to understand why. I'm not dating, Shoto interrupts. Unless the times I go to get Boba with Izuku count, do they count? I'd like them to. Ochako flounders again. She even employs one of Izuku's signature panicking moves, waving her hands around aimlessly. You haven't been on any dates? No, none. Then why did you just come back from one? I just came back from tea with Yayorozu, actually, he corrects. He hopes Ochako hasn't been hit by a hallucination quirk. Perhaps he should take her to see Recovery Girl, just in case. Shoto, please listen to me carefully. She pleads, noting her serious tone, he nods, settling himself into his favorite spot on the common room couch. It's his favorite spot, because Izuku's favorite is directly next to it. And since the class is coming down for a class social night any minute, he wants to use his quirk to warm the area up a little. Izuku makes a sweet little humming noise when he sits down and the couch is heated up, so of course, Shoto very much likes doing it for him. I'm listening, he replies solemnly. You were just on a date. Uraraka, Todoroki, you guys are here early. Ashido enthuses as she skips into the room, her equally energetic boyfriend, Kaminari, at her side, carrying an empty glass bottle. Shoto smiles because previously he would wonder what the bottle is for. He would assume it to be for recycling since it's glass, but thanks to Araki, he knows it's for a children's game called Spin the Bottle that's played with the aim of people kissing at random. He asked her how it was suitable for children to be engaging in what sounded like polyamorous attempts at an orgy, to which Ochako informed him that he needed to research sex extensively before he attempted to interact in that way with Izuku. After doing what he was told, and spending a whole weekend on the internet trying to understand gay sex and relationship norms, he started by watching porn, which Tenya helpfully informed him was not a realistic representation of sexual relationships, before stiffly directing Shoto to websites that he used to grasp such things before he started dating Saro. He made sure he had internalized the knowledge, throwing the laptop away after using it and then ordered a replacement that didn't have quite so many viruses from the pornography websites. He is now aware that it's not polyamory or having an orgy to play spin the bottle, as well as being very certain that he doesn't want to be polyamorous and share Izuku. There's nothing wrong with people that do want to share their partner, but he's sure it's not for him. Ochako says that he loves Izuku enough for three people, anyways. Hello, Ashido. Kaminari. Shoto greets. What are we doing during tonight's class bonding exercise? Call it a sleepover, dude, Kaminari tells him. Only Ida calls it that, and it sounds way too formal considering we're about to be playing the class's first game of truth or dare. And then a little spin the bottle once the first game's got everybody loosened up, of course. How have we not played this before now? Ochako asks. After we found out about Toto Babe's upbringing, we started with the really little kitty sleepover games and worked our way up, remember? Ashido says. Plus, sometimes we watch Disney movies instead of playing games. I still don't understand why you call me Elsa. Shoto points out, it's far from the first time he's made this argument, so he knows he won't win, but he thinks it bears repeating. She has no fire or heat abilities, Ashido. Ashido delves straight into her animated explanation of how Shoto is a real-life parallel to the Disney princess as the class slowly filters into the room, and Shoto once again questions if Ashido is okay. Is she aware that hot and cold are very different? He hopes so. All right, Toto bro, truth or dare? Kirishima asks when Shoto's turn first comes around. Shoto contemplates his options before thinking back to Kaminari daring Sero to knock on Aizawa's door in just his boxers and act as if nothing is amiss and deciding that dares seem to be specifically engineered to embarrass people. He would prefer not to be embarrassed. Honestly, he would think everyone would prefer that. But Sero had chosen dare himself, so apparently he's wrong about that. Truth. He resolutely states. Kirishima grins at him. Okay. We'll go easy since it's your first turn and your first time ever playing the game, he says. Have you ever been on a date? Oh, that's easy, Shoto replies. No, never. Yagirozu, Hagekure, Shoji, Kirishima, and Tokiyami all react very strangely to his answer. Tokiyami cocks his head to the side, while Dark Shadow screeches indignantly. Shoji drops his drink, Hagekure shrieks like a banshee, Yagirozu actually swears, and Kirishima goes pale. They trade glances, at least. He assumes Hagekure does, since the four who reacted are all doing it. 
though he can't see her to know for sure, before Kirishima clears his throat, chuckling nervously. Uh, yes, you have, he says, and Shoto frowns. I certainly haven't. Todoroki, you went on a date with Yayorozu today, Kirishima tells him. Shoto glances at Izuku for support, because he doesn't understand what's happening, and Izuku's expression usually tells him if he's being pranked and doesn't understand, but Izuku immediately looks away from him. It hurts, especially since he doesn't understand why, so he focuses on Kirishima and his ridiculous nonsense. Kirishima, I'm not interested in girls romantically or sexually. I did not go on a date with Yayorozu. We went for tea because we're friends. Oh my goodness, Yayorozu says, flushing pink. It seems Hagakure and I have perhaps jumped to some conclusions that, oh uh, well, aren't entirely correct then. You've also been on dates with Shoji and Tokiyami and, well, me, Kirishima then informs him. Shoto shakes his head. No, you're mistaken. How are they mistaken, Shoto? Ochako asks carefully. Why she is asking specifically, knowing full well that he's in love with Izuku and would never date someone else, Shoto doesn't know, but he answers anyway since it seems she wants the whole class to hear what he says. I would never have said yes to a date with any of them, because I'm interested in someone, and he isn't Tokiyami, Shoji, or Kirishima, of course. Tokiyami, without a word, stands up and heads for the elevator. I think I'll go with him, just to make sure he's all right, Shoji says in a rush before heading after his friend. Shoto hopes Tokiyami isn't feeling ill. Now slow down here, Kaminari says. What did you think you were doing with him, Toto? Spending time with friends, Shoto replies with a frown. What else would he have been doing? Kirishima laughs again. The sound a little strangled, and Shoto feels that sensation in his stomach that Otaku informed him was guilt. I'm sorry, Kirishima. If I'd known you were asking me on a date, I would definitely not have said yes, he says comfortingly. Kirishima doesn't look all that soothed by his reply, though perhaps honesty isn't as comforting for him as it is for Shoto. He knows he would feel better if someone explained a situation to him explicitly. Why's that, Happy? Bakugo asks with a mean grin. Shoto doesn't understand why he's asking. He's been protesting being dragged into their game the whole time, yet now he wants to ask questions. Kaminari elbows Bakugo, shooting him a glare. Stop trying to start shit, Cat. He elbows his friend. It's pointless, though, because the class all look curious and hungry for answers, especially Ashido. I want to know, too. Me as well. What is it, Todoroki? Do you really have a crush? Oh my god, Toto likes someone. Who is it, Todoroki? Overwhelmed. Shoto once again glances at Izuku, hoping he's willing to help, but freezes when he sees the tears in his eyes. Panic grips him, and he just... I'm in love with Izuku. Ah, his panic honesty bombs, as Ochako so aptly named them, have returned. He hasn't dropped one of those for a while. Fucking what? Bakugo snarls. Shoto jolts as his view of Izuku is obscured, replaced with angry red eyes that are too close to him. He leans back, shuffling so that he's not virtually nose-to-nose -nose with Bakugo. What do you mean? I mean, Icy Hot. He growls, the usual nickname sounding more like a curse. What the fuck do you mean you're in love with Deku? You're kidding, right? Shoto hears Izuku suck in a hurt breath, and his eyes widen as he shakes his head, panicked at the idea of upsetting Izuku. Why would I kid about that? Because Deku's too fucking good for you, you half-and-half half bastard. I mean, he's a fucking useless nerd, obviously. Not thinking anything like that is obvious, or even true. Shoto narrows his eyes and freezes a block of ice over Bakugo's hands. He doesn't like how mean Bakugo is to Izuku, but Ochako claims they have a specific dynamic that's hard to understand, and he knows he doesn't understand some simple dynamic still, so he's kept quiet about it, not wanting to offend or upset Izuku. That being said, doesn't mean he has to sit back and do nothing when those insults are being spat directly in his face, and he can hear Izuku trying to cover up shaky breathing that's usually a precursor to him crying when he's trying not to. What the hell? Unfreeze me, asshole! Not unless you apologize to Izuku. Why the hell would I say sorry to him? I'm helping him, idiot. He's too fucking good for you, and he'd never be interested in you. Before Shoto can say that he thinks the same thing, and it's Ochako who's certain Izuku shares his feelings, a tentacle of Black Whip snaps out and wraps around Bakugo's chest, kicking him backward and out of Shoto's personal space harshly. With the view cleared, he can see that Izuku's eyes are still glassy, but he doesn't look upset. He looks furious. Shoto hopes he hasn't just lost his best friend. Apologize. I'm sorry. Not you, Shoto. Izuku interrupts his tone gentle but his eyes cold as he shakes a stupefied, silent, gaping Bakugo with his quirk and glares at him. Izuku speaks again, his voice matching his eyes this time. Him. I want him to apologize to you. That snaps Bakugo out of his gawking quickly enough. What the fuck do I have to apologize for, dumb Deku? All of it. 
Izuku tells him in a flat voice that sounds alien compared to his friend's normally happy, lively voice. You owe Shoto an apology for everything you just said to him, Bakugo. And while we're at it, you don't get to speak on my behalf. Mido, maybe we should just calm down here. I mean, did I ask you, Kirishima? Kirishima swallows the rest of his sentence. Uh, nope. No, you did not. Ah, well, in that case, there's nothing for you to answer, is there? Deku, I know you're mad, but maybe let Bakugo go, Ochako suggests gently. I think you should say sorry as well. But if Aizawa comes in here while you're using your quirk for this kind of thing, you'll be in big trouble. I don't need you fighting my battles for me, Cheeks. Bakugo snarls. Now let me the hell go, Deku. Am I actually talking out loud? Izuku asks, glancing at Ojiro for confirmation. Despite the fact that, it, like everyone else, Ojiro is slightly taken aback by Izuku's uncharacteristic anger, he manages to nod. This kind of fury from Izuku is usually directed at villains, but Shoto's seen how quickly some of them surrender once they realize who's raging at them. He's certainly never been on the receiving end of it, but he can imagine it's rather intimidating. Uh, yeah, definitely talking out loud, Midoriya. Ojiro laughs nervously. Izuku seems satisfied by his response and turns back to Bakugo, his normally warm eyes now cold and hard. While Shoto doesn't typically enjoy anger, there's something about Izuku's that he finds comforting, flattering even. Perhaps it's because it's on his behalf instead of being directed at him, and coming from someone he trusts implicitly at that. Izuku so rarely gets angry outside of hero training or taking down real villains, so the fact that he is now tells Shoto that it's warranted, that there's a reason. He is not afraid of Izuku's anger, although he would like him to calm down, if only because he's familiar with how out of control a person who's rarely angry feels when they're suddenly hit with it. It's not pleasant, to say the least. Izuku, why are you upset? Shoto asks. Immediately his friend turns to him and softens. Because I don't want to hear anyone tell you that you aren't good enough. For anything. He murmurs something else, but Shoto doesn't quite hear him. What was that? Sorry. Let me the fuck go, Deku! Bakugo yells, though he's ignored by everyone except Kirishima, who only shoots him a placating look and holds his hands up, silently telling him to wait. I said, I don't want you to be told that you aren't good enough for anything, Izuku repeats before sighing. But especially not me. You're... you're more than good enough for me, Shoto. Too good, in fact. I don't understand, Shoto admits. Oh, Chaka groans, slapping her hand against Bakugo and floating him up to the ceiling like an annoyance she just wants out of the way. Before he can object... She glares, fierce and fiery, like when she fought against him in their first-year sports festival. Bakugo, if you shut the hell up for two minutes, I'll let you down and then we can go and spar so you can burn your temper off, she bargains. Fucking fine, Bakugo responds, crossing his arms in a manner that looks ridiculous when he's floating up in the air with Izuku's black whip wrapped around him like a character balloon in a theme park. All right, she says, returning to her cheery and prim self. Deku, I told you that you were going to need to be very explicit about this or he'd get confused. Do you remember that? I... how have I not been explicit? Just say the words, Deku. Chaku, I... say... the... words. Izuku rolls his shoulders tensely before turning back to Shoto. Shoto stares right back into his eyes because he loves Izuku's eyes and he'll take any chance he gets to look at them without it being weird. Shoto, I love you too. Oh, he knew that. When he voices this to Izuku, Ochako screams into her hands and kicks Izuku, who blinks at her before smiling at Shoto softly, like he's done something cute. If he finds out what it is, he'll definitely do it again. He likes Izuku's smaller smiles because it feels like they only get directed at him, like they're Shoto-specific smiles. Shoto, I need you to look at me and really listen, Izuku tells him. Shoto blinks, tilting his head to the side. I am looking at you. I'm always looking at you. Izuku huffs a quiet laugh and nods. Shoto, I am in love with you. I love you romantically, the same way you love me, he specifies, enunciating very carefully. Are you sure? Shoto asks skeptically. He knows that Izuku would never consciously lie to him or joke about something so serious, but it's a question that needs asking. Bakugo is right. Izuku is far too good for Shoto, so we'd like to be certain about whether or not Izuku actually loves him that way before he lets himself get happy about it. Sho, I promise that I'm sure. He replies, Swear on all might. Shoto's eyes widen. Oh. Oh, you are sure. Finally! Ochako squeals. I don't have to listen to them pining anymore. They can tell each other all the sappy stuff they usually tell me. Shoto furrows his brow. But I like talking to you. He tells her plaintively. Izuka twines their fingers together in solidarity, and Shoto's expression instantly brightens. Yeah, Chako, he likes talking to you, Izuka says. Don't upset my boyfriend. He adds in a teasing yet slightly smug tone. Shoto's cheeks hurt from his broad smile at the word boyfriend. 
How does Izuka smile like this all the time? It's quite painful. Maybe he should recommend... Smaller smiles to Izuku, he thinks as friendly banter breaks out between Otako and Shoto's boyfriend. His sparkling grin only gets wider at that, and Shoto lets it, regardless of the facial ache it causes. It's worth it to see Izuku's eyes fixated on his face, joyful and adoring. Shoto would do a lot of very unheroic things to keep Izuku looking at him like that, but somehow, as Izuku squeezes his hand, he doesn't think he'll have to. All right, listeners. This concludes the fic, Love You Holy, Only Ever You. I really love this fic a lot. I love this author's whole collection of Tototeku fics. I think they do an amazing job. There's a few more that I plan to do at some point by this author as well. Let me know your thoughts and reactions to this one shot. And as always, thank you so much for listening.